Hello everyone, it is the end of the month of June and this is going to be a very different pickups video than usual because moving, like I mentioned at the end of last month, um, trying to find a new place, we find a new place, we're moving in two weeks, uh, two weeks from tomorrow actually, and uh, most of my stuff is packed up, even stuff that I picked up uh, this month earlier. So what I'm doing uh, this month for this month's pickups video is I'm going to focus on one thing, which is that I bought an Xbox One. I bought an Xbox One because I'm going to have the space to redo the whole setup and everything like that um, and make sure that that setup incorporates the Xbox One. And I basically bought the system. I bought all the games that I need for that system. And, I mean, if I come across something and it's cheap on Xbox One for some reason and I was going to get it on PS4, I guess I'd pick it up on Xbox One. But other than that, I really kind of have everything that I wanted for Xbox One anyway, which is why I never bought one. So this is going to be that whole, the whole video is just going to be, I'm going to talk about the Xbox One, the system I bought, and the games that I picked up for it that I had wanted anyway. Uh, starting with, I can't get the, the system on video because it's hooked up, it's right here. Yeah, yeah. The system is right there. It is, turns out it's probably the best system I could have gone with, both between price and features. It's the 1S model, which is the white one. The slim and and honestly, one of the things that I hated about seeing the Xbox One in person, it comes with uh, these sleek looking white controllers, which are really good actually. Um, having the Xbox One controller finally like in my hands and using it, um, the triggers are really really big, but overall it's actually a really really good controller. I don't care for the way that they changed uh, like basically the start and back buttons into these two weird things to have a multimedia system, but other than that, it's actually a really good, uh, you know, redesign, finessing of the of the Xbox controller that we've had for 18 years. Um, the S model, I didn't know this until I actually saw it and had the chance to buy it, is the best model I could have imagined because it doesn't have one of those big power bricks which I really, really didn't want to deal with, not just because, you know, it sucks having to deal with those all the time. That's a huge disadvantage that they have that Sony doesn't have on any of their models, as far as I know, because um, they haven't had it in a long time. But Microsoft has always had that, and I probably have run into about 50 to 100 people calling the store looking for a replacement for the Xbox One power brick because they're, theirs broke. It died, it, it fried itself, something's wrong with it. And Microsoft makes it so difficult for you to get a new one. And so when I had the, the chance to get one of these ones, and I found out that this the S model here, which, like I said, I can't... It's it's plugged in and everything, and I don't want to move it over here. But it's... It's like, it's this wide, and, and like, you know, this this far back, basically. It's very, very small compared to the original, very, very ugly console. And it has a regular power cord, just a regular double-rounded generic power cord. And I was like, I couldn't be happier about that. That is the that is the best thing I've ever heard. And so it's a 500 gigabyte model. And because it's a 500 gigabyte, and I'm going to be obviously really, really committed to um, physical games and everything like that. Even only the the dozen or so games that I got, I already real, uh, took up so much space on the hard drive. So I had to buy another hard drive for it too. Um, since I don't plan on getting as many games for it as I have on the PS4. I only got a one terabyte, but this guy will have me covered for a while, so that's a one terabyte external hard drive in there as well. And starting now, just quick with the games, which is going to be like a dozen games. Uh, I got Cuphead. Cuphead was like the one game that Microsoft really, really had that like, I was like, man, I really want to play that game. Uh, so that's probably the one that I've been playing the most kind of doing like one boss or two at a time because it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to finish one boss. Um, it's really, really satisfying when you do it. Um, after Cuphead, the one of the biggest things that I wanted to play was Halo because I'm a huge, huge Halo fan. It is the probably the series that I would buy an Xbox for. Like that's a system seller on the Xbox for me. I've been playing it since... The first time I got an original Xbox, which I traded in my GameCube, got an original Xbox, Halo was one of the games I got with it. I was like 12 years old at the time, but I loved it. 
Halo is great. Halo 2 has always been one of my favorite games. Um, and so I had to have the Master Chief Collection, even though I got, um, you know, I obviously have 1 through 4. I got the Anniversary Edition of the first one on 360, which is the version they included here. But the only thing that you have to buy this for that you can't get anywhere else is Halo 2 Anniversary Edition. And Halo 2 being the best one in the series, in my opinion, and probably a lot of people's opinions, had to have this no matter the fact that Microsoft doesn't really produce it on disc anymore. So I still had to go to Best Buy and pay like the $25 for it, which is, I think, the most I paid for any of the games I bought. But I, I've been playing this too, playing uh, Halo 1 Anniversary, which I hadn't actually started playing on the 360, and it's it's gorgeous, and I love love Halo, and so it's like, yeah, this is worth having. On that note, I also had to get uh, Halo 5, which I'll get to eventually. I've heard that this one's not great. It's probably going to be the easy, easiest ranking fifth um, out of the five main series Halo games. I also haven't played ODST or Reach. Um, I've just played the main series. But uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to playing this to see how it ranks up. Um, I really liked 4, and so I have a lot of faith in 343, especially because, you know, they handled part of this as well, along with Saber. Saber Interactive had uh, was tasked with doing something with this, too, who made a Shaq Fu and NBA Playgrounds. But uh, Halo 5, yeah, hit, uh, obviously an exclusive. Halo 6 just got announced, and Halo Gears and Forza, that's all they have, apparently. I have games right here that are exclusive to Xbox One, but apparently that's all they have anymore. Um, the next two games really do go together as well. Uh, like I said, Gears, which I never really got into anyway, but I will try this. Um, I only got this because I wanted to have Rare Replay, which was a thing I was kind of jealous about, but when you think about it, it's like most of the games I already had anyway, the big ones anyway. Um, so that wasn't as big of a deal. It was just that like, having that disc, like, I love Rare, I love the company, I love their games, I love everything about them. Um, so just having this disc was a huge thing for me. I had to have this as soon as I got it. And I got the Gears 1 just to have Gears and try it out and see if I could get into it. Because I tried Gears 2 a while back when I got my 360 the first time, and I, I just didn't get into it. So I'll try this Gears Ultimate version as well uh, and see if I like that. On that note, on the Rare Replay note, I also got Super Lucky's Tale, which is a... <laughs> it looks like it might have been... It may as well have been made by Rare, but it wasn't. And it's not, like, amazing from what I've heard, but it's it's fun and it's good for what it is. And it was only a $30 title anyway, but it's amazing to me that this is an, an Xbox One exclusive. And it, it it also looks like a horrible budget title. But the fact that it's an Xbox One exclusive and that, you know, like, there was work put into this. Like, really, it's not a cash grab or anything. And it's actually, uh, it came out fairly recently and it's it's 4K Xbox One X enhanced and everything. So, it's it's a little bit deceiving, even though the game itself is, is decent at best. But I, I really want to try it because it looks like all the games that I want to play anyway. Like all the rare games on that package. Your banjos and your whatnot. Um, next, uh, I'll grab two things here that aren't actually, well, three things that aren't actually exclusives, and the rest of them will be. Um, I actually grabbed, uh, WWE 2K18, um, because, uh, I had the chance to buy this when I bought the system, so I was like, yeah, give me the, give me 2K18. Um, it's gotten cheap enough that it wasn't a big deal. Still no showcase mode in this, and I really hope that they bring it back for next year, and I might actually buy it soon after it comes out. Um, but I've had a little bit of fun tinkering around with this and everything. It's just, I don't get into the same modes that everyone else does, so that's why I don't really care that much when, when the game comes out, unless there's a showcase. Um, related, uh, 2K17, NBA 2K17, which I only grabbed because it was, uh, it was in a, like, 4 for 20 sale, and they didn't have... I think it was Sunset Overdrive, which is a game I got. They didn't have Sunset Overdrive with a case, and I'm like, I'm not buying this without a case. So I'll just grab this one because it's just it's not going to make a difference anyway. Um, all I ever do is hear good things about the NBA 2K games, except for 2K18, which is a complete nightmare of microtransactions. Uh, so trying this will be will be kind of interesting. I, I 
I feel like every year I start to care a little bit about basketball when the playoffs roll around, and that's I'm not like I still say like I don't really care, but like look what's going on over here. So I'll try that out at some point. I don't know. Uh, and then Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I think was a timed exclusive for Xbox One. I might be wrong about that. Um, but the version I've seen on PS4 is this tall, like, art book version, which you'd think that I would really want to have that one, especially not only just being on PS4, but having that extra stuff with it. But I was thinking about it, and I'm like, all it would do is just kind of piss me off, because the, the thing doesn't need to be taller. Um, it's just it's a little bit extra of, of shelf space that you need for it. Excuse me. And... And I was like, I don't really need it. And I just got this new Xbox One, and, you know, I might as well grab this for it, too. So, I've heard nothing but good things about this. And I loved the first Tomb Raider reboot uh, title. So, it's basically Uncharted at this point. And so, I'm really uh, looking forward to playing this one for sure. Because I, I thought the first one, I played the definitive, the fin definitive edition. The definitive edition on PS4, and I loved it. So, we'll get to Rise of the Tomb Raider at some point, and that'll be fun, too. The rest of the things I have are all Xbox One exclusive, so amazing. There are actually that many of them. Um, starting with Quantum Break. Uh, Quantum Break is from Remedy, and it is... So Remedy are the people that made uh, Alan Wake and who made the uh, the old Max Payne games. And just the way that they tell stories and the way that they set up their game structurally, I've heard, I've heard a lot of good things about this game, story-wise and gameplay-wise. Um... My understanding of this is that, like, you play the game and then you watch a TV episode that bridges the parts of the game together, and so when you pop this in, this is why I needed the extra hard drive, it downloads all the TV episodes. Like, why could you not have fit this on the disc? Like, killing me, man. You're killing me with the with the space of the hard drive. Um, it's uh, Ori in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. I think it's like a... I think... It, it structurally is like a Metroidvania, but is a gorgeous-looking indie platformer game with a lot of story to it. Uh, and this is a PC and Xbox One exclusive title. It looks looks fantastic. Heard nothing but good things about it. Had to have this uh, on disc. Very important. Um, so Killer Instinct. Again, we're talking about uh, Rare and whatnot. Uh, not great at fighting games. Killer Instinct being one of the main ones that I'm very bad at, but uh, when you to think that you brought back Killer Instinct and it's supposed to be pretty solid, it's an Xbox One exclusive. It's something that they have going for them. Definitely interested in trying this out and see how that has come since '96. Uh, technically, yeah, ni no, actually, it came out in '96 on the 64 as well. So yeah, '96 last time we got a Killer Instinct game. So and it's on that rare replay as well. Uh, probably Killer Instinct 1 and 2. Yeah, Killer Instinct Gold is on there. So they put the gold version on there. Um, Dead Rising 3, which I think was a launch title. If not a launch title, it was very close to launch title. And uh, I don't think Dead Rising 4 is an exclusive. I might be wrong about that. Um, but Dead Rising 3, even though I, ha I like Dead Rising... But I've always, like, Capcom always does this stuff with their newer games. Lost Planet has it at night. That's why I never got into Lost Planet. They try to do something really quirky with either structure or controls or something like that. And so the first Dead Rising, I kind of had to give up on it after a little while because I didn't care for the way that the structure of the game was with the save points and just the traversing across the mall, basically. But I've tried this game a little bit um, before, and I knew that I really liked it, um, and that the structure, the little bit that I played of it didn't have the same problems that I got. That might still not be true if I play it like from the beginning and all the way through. But uh, I know I liked this game a lot when I tried it, because it was just crazy and gory and over the top, and Dead Rising is really uh, an incredibly self-aware franchise that kind of keeps going in that direction for good reason. Um, and then you have the <laughs> launch title or close to launch title exclusive that just looks good and doesn't really do anything. It's Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, it's by Crytek, so you know it's going to look 
absolutely stunning. Haven't played it, just know it's like, it's an exclusive and it's got, it's an action game and it's got a, a setting that I really enjoy, so I, I knew I was going to get this anyway. Not really looking forward to it as much as I am some of the other games, but it's a, what, considering how cheap it is, it's, it's a must-have. This, I am almost positive, was a natural launch title, Sunset Overdrive, and I'm amazed that this game hasn't actually picked up a little bit in price or hasn't, like, maintained at least $10 because it's supposed to be fantastic. Um, it's crazy, open world, just over-the-top adrenaline. The main problem that it runs into is that it's a Microsoft in-house Xbox One exclusive, although it's made by Insomniac. Um, so there are points where it seems like too corporate for what it's trying to do, and it kind of eats, eats at the back of your mind. This is what I've heard from so many people. But the game itself is like really, really solid gameplay, and doing doing all these little crazy things up until the point where you kind of go, this is Microsoft, man, this is Microsoft. I don't know if I trust them to, to be putting out this um, with, with complete integrity, you know? Uh, and then lastly... Uh, this is ReCore. When this came out, this, I, from what I understand, was total flop. Uh, dropped down in price really, really fast, but it is an exclusive, and supposed to be a pretty good shooter. Um, and what I've heard is that, is that, um, through patches and through updates and everything like that, they actually brought this game back to being a really, really solid hidden gem. Like, if we can have hidden gems at this point, ReCore is probably one of them. Uh, so I'd like to see that for myself and see, you know, with, with now what we have is conflicting, like, sides about this game. People who played it and were like, this is boring. And people who played it, like, after the fact and were like, no, they made this so much better. I, I'm really interested to see how that goes. Um, and if not, you, it's not, it's not expensive anymore, so I didn't pay much for it. Uh, and it's an exclusive, and you say, hey, I can't get this anywhere else. And I bought an Xbox One, so you get a... Take what you can get with that, right? Um, and yeah, that's that's it. That's my whole Xbox One collection. And at this point, I don't know what else I'm really going to buy for it. But, yeah. This is all you need on the Xbox One. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see everybody next month, and we'll actually talk about stuff that's not for the Xbox One. Um, and that'll, be, that'll be probably a pretty big video, actually, because with just all the Switch stuff alone that has been coming out uh, recently. I got one today. There's one coming tomorrow. There's going to be a couple more in July. And Damn, son, it's it's a lot. So uh, just a little interim thing, and I'll see you next time, next month, for a pickups video from the new apartment. Peace out.